Hello, my name is Kim Ratcliffe and I'm the Associate Executive Director of Student Services for the Missouri School Boards Association, which includes responsibilities for the MSBA Medicaid Consortium. The Medicaid Consortium assists school districts with both school district administrative claiming, which we'll be talking about today, as well as Medicaid claiming for direct services, such as speech language therapy, occupational therapy, physical therapy, as well as transportation, private duty nursing services, personal care attendants, audiology, and psychology counseling. The purpose of the video presentation today is to train school district personnel that have been chosen by their district to participate in school district administrative claiming. If at any time during or after this video you have questions, please make a note of them. You may contact either your school district SDAC coordinator or you may contact the MSBA Medicaid Consortium at our help desk at the number that will be listed at the end of this presentation. With me today is Colin Swearingen, Senior Director of the MSBA Medicaid Consortium, who will be co-presenting with me. Hello, Colin. Let's begin by reviewing a few key terms and their acronyms. Your district has elected to participate in Medicaid claiming to tap a source of federal revenue available to school districts. In Missouri, Mo Health Net Division, or MHD, is the name for the prior Division of Medical Services. Now, in Missouri, we use the name Mo Health Net to refer to the federal Medicaid program. This video is providing you required training to participate in the School District Administrative Claiming Program. People commonly refer to this program as SDAC or SDAC program. A key component of the program is the completion of the Random Moment Sample Form or the RMS form. Let's talk a little about why certain school personnel are chosen to participate in ASTIC. Your school district chose you to participate because as part of your routine job function and duties, you are involved in one or more of the following activities. Referring, coordinating, and monitoring the delivery of health care services. Or perhaps you're involved in linking the child and family to an ongoing health care delivery system. Or you may be involved in building and sustaining state and local partnerships for the delivery of medical, mental health, and dental services. And now let's do a little bit of background on MoHealthNet, or MHD. MHD is a federally funded health insurance program for needy people and those with low income. For children under the age of 21, some service may be covered under a program called EPSDT, whether or not those services are covered under the state Medicaid plan. EPSDT stands for Early and Periodic Screening, Diagnosis and Treatment, and it means just that. In Missouri, it is referred to as the Healthy Children and Youth Program, or HCY program. The goal of the Healthy Children and Youth Program is to treat or ameliorate defects and physical and mental illness identified through periodic screenings so that children can be successful in the school environment and, of course, in the community. Under the Missouri HCY program, Mo Health Net will cover any medically necessary service an eligible child needs if it is deemed necessary by a medical professional. Children who may be eligible for Mo Health Net coverage are children for whom adoptive assistance or foster care payments are made. Individuals are children whose families meet low income guidelines and children with certain disabilities. The next slide shows a variety of medical, dental, and mental health services that may be covered by MoHealthNet or Healthy Children and Youth Program. As mentioned earlier, if you're covered by MoHealthNet, services that a doctor deems are medically necessary may be covered through the MoHealthNet program. These are examples of some MoHealthNet covered services. As you review the list, you'll notice things like nursing services, dental services, immunizations, physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, hearing services, which includes hearing screenings, vision screenings, substance abuse treatments, and behavioral services. As you know, many of the services listed are services that occur in school districts as well as within the community. Your role in the SDAC program is related to your involvement in these types of MoHealth Net covered activities provided in schools or by referrals to outside MoHealth Net providers. Each time that we mention MoHealthNet covered services in this presentation, we are referring to such health services that are offered either at your school district or by outside providers for MoHealthNet. 
The SDAC program is easy to participate in for two reasons. One, there's a minimum amount of paperwork involved for you in the claiming process. And two, the SDAC program, you do not need to know which children are Medicaid eligible. It has no bearing on the documentation that you'll complete. Let's take a look at the next slide that shows some of the outreach and other activities that you may be engaged in that are examples of you performing SDAC activities. First, outreach to MoHealthNet or the HCY program. This could be an example of informing families of how to access MoHealthNet program or services covered under the program. Second, assistance with a MoHealth and application process. This could include the collecting and gathering of documents necessary for the application or assisting a family directly with completing an application. Another example could be referring students for health services either to district staff or MoHealthNet providers in the community. Another example could be coordinating with other health care providers or parents about services that students are getting. Arranging for specialized transportation such as a school nurse making or arranging for a parent or a caseworker or homeschool communicator to take a child to the doctor or to other MHD services. And finally, participating in or coordinating any type of medical, dental, or mental health training that staff participate in uh, to improve the delivery of medical or MoHealthNet services. It also includes any paperwork, clerical work, or travel time associated with any of the mentioned activities as part of that activity, such as preparing training materials, making phone calls, or traveling time to and from training. Let's review what we've learned so far. Many of the activities you're involved in at your school district or on a routine basis are actually SDAC activities. Okay, but you do a lot of other things as well. And we need to find out what percentage of your time is spent on various types of activities. This concludes Chapter 1. Chapter 2 explains how the random moment process works and how to complete the RMS form. Let's talk a minute about how the random moment sampling process works. Random moment sampling is a federally accepted method for documenting the amount of time school personnel spend on various activities or tasks that make up the total of the school day. Our software system compiles employee data in one of two ways. We either pool participants together from participating school districts in the MSBA Medicaid Consortium to what we refer to as a general universe, or for some districts, we create a unique universe comprised only of that particular district's participants. From a universe, the RMS system randomly selects an employee and randomly selects a moment of a particular day in that quarter. Each randomly generated moment in time gets paired with an employee's name from the universe. Your district has elected to complete RMS forms using MSBA's electronic system, Therapy Log. I'll be sharing with you shortly what you'll need to know and understand in a few easy steps. However, there are two prerequisites that should be mentioned before talking about the electronic RMS process. One, before any RMS forms can be completed, you have to make sure that you have a valid email address and if it changes your SDAC coordinator is immediately made aware of that change. Secondly, before anyone completes an RMS form either electronically or on paper, the participant must have received comprehensive training on the SDAC process within one calendar year of completing the randomly selected moment. It's a federal requirement that each person complete SDAC training annually whether or not you are chosen to complete an RMS form. You may actually be reviewing this segment as a component of that comprehensive SDAC training requirement right now. Now let's talk about the electronic RMS process. First, if you've chosen to be sampled during a particular quarter, you will receive a notification email of your exact date and time of your moment in an email about two business days prior to your assigned moment. When you open the email, it will give you three steps to follow. Step 1. Write down your SDAC PIN. This PIN is used when completing your electronic RMS form. You cannot complete your moment without this PIN as it is your electronic signature. This is a good time to also make note 
of the date and time of your selected moment. Step two, click on the confirm link. This is a very important step because it alerts your SDAC coordinator that you know that you have received and read the notification email and that you're aware of your upcoming moment. It is critical that the confirm link be clicked before your moment in time. Step three, the final step, which can, can't be done until after your moment occurs, is to click on the fill out form link. Now this actual link takes you to your electronic RMS form. Now this step is very time sensitive. You cannot access the form or click on the link until after the moment is passed. And it should be completed within two business days of the moment. Now we understand that there are reasons why you can't meet that deadline, such as you're homesick for a few days or four consecutive snow days. But complete the form when you return and as a rule of thumb, mentally file away two business days. The day your moment is to occur, you should receive another reminder email about your sample moment. Now this email only contains two steps. Step one, write down your SDAC PIN, and step two, fill out the form link. Now assuming your moment has now passed and you've clicked on the fill out the form link, you will now see an electronic RMS form like the one on the screen. Now as you can see, the top of the form contains information like the date, time of your moment, the sample sequence number, your name, and your school district's information, and even your job title. Now take note of the date and time in the upper left hand corner of the form. This is your official assigned minute and assigned date. You must document the activity you were doing at that exact minute on that specific date. Below that information are four parts that must be completed. Part one, locate the left-hand column titled Section 1 Positions. Click on the circle to the left of that position code that matches the job title on your form. This is especially important if you have more than one job title, such as an assistant principal and a coach. Choose the position that matches the job title on the form. And if you don't see that position that you currently hold, you can go down to the last box on the page and click on the circle next to Other, and then just type in your position. Part 2. As close to the prescribed moment as possible, record what you were doing at that particular moment of the day. You will type a brief description of the activity you are performing at your prescribed minute at the top center portion of the page. Now probably the easiest and most accurate way to type that description is to answer three questions. Question number one, what were you doing? Number two, who were you with? And number three, why were you doing this activity? Now if you answer these three questions accurately and with enough detail, it should be easy for you to select and indicate the corresponding activity code on the RMS form. So those three questions again are, what were you doing? Who are you with? Now being sure that you never use names of individuals. And why were you doing this activity? That is, what was the intended result? Now let me give you a couple of examples of how you might answer those questions. What were you doing? Answer, providing speech therapy. Who are you with? A student. And why were you doing this activity? To fulfill the speech therapy services listed on their IEP. Now your description then would read, I was providing speech therapy to a student to fulfill the speech therapy services listed on the IEP. Next example, what were you doing? Providing information about how to access MoHealthNet services and the benefits an eligible family could receive. Who were you with? A parent. Why were you doing this activity? Because the family didn't have medical insurance for their children. The description then could read, I was informing a parent about accessing MoHealthNet insurance and the benefits that they could receive if deemed eligible because the children and the family were uninsured. Notice the use in each of the examples of strong, direct action words describing what the person is doing. Use words in your description such as informing, explaining, referring, scheduling, arranging, providing assistance, etc. Part 3, locate Section 2 activities. It's in the right hand column of the page. Select an activity code that corresponds with the description you've typed up above in the description box. 
You will see in this section a listing of codes from 1A all the way to 10. Now if you're unsure what some of these codes mean, just simply put your cursor over any of the headings and a comment box will pop up that gives you a brief description of that code. Now after you find the code that best matches the description above, simply left click next to that code. And if you think of activities that you routinely do that we didn't mention, just please make a note of them and carefully review the extended activity codes and descriptions. You may have received this either as a handout prior to completing this training today, or it's also available on MSBA's website. If you still have questions after reviewing that document, I would recommend contacting your district's SDAC coordinator for additional help. Part 4. In the final step, all that is left to do is enter your SDAC PIN. Remember back to step 1? This is the PIN that you were advised to write down in the notification and reminder emails that you should have received. Simply enter your PIN now in the box to the right of the Signature of RMS Participant PIN text, then click Send to SDAC Coordinator. You have now completed your electronic RMS form and have sent it to your SDAC Coordinator for review. I told you it was easy. Well, pretty easy, Colin. Sometimes RMS forms are sent back to participants by your district's SDAC Coordinator to either gather more information to determine if coding is correct or to change a position code or activity code that may have been selected incorrectly. Let's talk about that correction process now. Basically, it starts off with an email from your SDAC coordinator. The email is very similar to the original email you would have received just two business days prior to your moment occurring. Open up this email and you'll find a message from your coordinator explaining why the form has been sent back to you. You'll then be instructed to click on the link to take you to the form. But remember to write down your unique SDAC PIN number, which is also in the email. You will need that again. Once the form has loaded, you will see it already filled out. All you have to do is to make the changes and then return it to your SDAC coordinator again. If the send back reason is because more information is needed in the description, then go to the description box. You will see that your original description already appears. Just add or change the description as necessary. If your send back reason is because of an incorrect position or activity code, then just make your new selection and the original selection will disappear. When all changes have been made, use that SDAC PIN, your unique one from the email, here at the bottom of the form and hit Send to SDAC Coordinator. It would be a good idea to also call or email your SDAC Coordinator after you've submitted the correction to let him or her know that you finished. This concludes this section on how to complete an electronic RMS form. We have completed the explanation of the SDAC program and how to complete the required documentation. So, we're ready for the activity codes. Colin, I'm going to pass it back to you at this time. The coding structure is called parallel coding. That means for every non-MoHealthNet related activity code, there is a MoHealthNet related activity code. This is a federally approved method of coding daily activities of school personnel and yields data on what percentage of a school day personnel are engaged in SDAC activities and what percentage they are not. This one critical factor is determining how much federal reimbursement school districts receive. We will be reviewing both A and B codes as we go through the presentation today. The first code, 1A, is called non -Health Net Outreach. Use this code when performing activities that inform individuals about non -Health Net social, vocational, general health, and education programs, including special education, and how to access them. This includes explaining the range of benefits and how to obtain them and encompasses any written or oral methods of presentation to do so. Colin, Code 1A also includes such things as child find activities under IDEA, which could include things such as assisting in the early identification of children with special medical, educational, or mental health needs. 
distributing outreach materials regarding the IDEA, or posting public notices or community service announcements about the school district's obligation to find and serve children with disabilities under the IDEA. Code 1B is the exact opposite of that. Use this code when informing individuals about MoHealthNet benefits and how to access the program. Information includes a combination of oral and written methods that describe the range of services available through MoHealthNet. Let's look at a few examples for the MoHealthNet Outreach Code 1B. You could be informing children and families about the benefits and availability of services provided by MoHealthNet. You could be informing pregnant students of the availability of services for their unborn child. So, Colin, basically, Code 1B is used for any information that you're providing about MoHealthNet or the HCY program or the Missouri Health Net for Kids program. It could also include such things as providing an address or a phone number for the Family Support Division or providing and discussing eligibility factors for MoHealthNet program or providing a family with written information about MoHealthNet agency and its covered services. The MoHealthNet Division in the state of Missouri is a great agency that really encourages outreach for this program. We have seen our outreach numbers and our MoHealthNet numbers rise since the program started. And that tells us that some children that didn't have access to services are now receiving those services, which is really the goal of this entire program. MoHealthNet eligibility is determined by the Department of Social Services Family Support Division. Code 2A facilitating an application for non-MoHealthNet programs. Use this code when assisting an individual or family to prepare an application for the program such as Temporary Assistance to Needy Families, or TANF, Food Stamps, WIC, Daycare, Legal Aid, or other social or educational programs, or when referring them to an appropriate agency to complete an application. This could be facilitating a student's college application, scholarship application, or sports application, or an extracurricular activity. Pretty much any application that is non-medical in nature. It could be daycare or free and reduced lunch applications. They all fall under this category. Any application where you are helping a family or a student to actually complete or gather the required records for those applications, we will be using a Code 2A for facilitating an application for non-MoHealthNet programs. Code 2B, Facilitating MoHealthNet Eligibility Determination. This code is used when assisting a family in establishing MoHealthNet eligibility by making referrals to the Family Support Division for eligibility determination. Assisting the applicant in the completing of the MoHealthNet application forms, collecting information, or assisting in the reporting and required changes affecting eligibility. An example of an activity under this code would be to go to the MHD website, download and print an application for MoHealthNet and assist a parent with completing the application. You might also discuss the items needed to establish eligibility, such as documentation of their income, helping the parent understand and provide this documentation when they submit the application to the Family Support Division, which would speed up the process of eligibility determination for that family and child. This brings me to another important point. Everyone is involved at some point with paperwork and clerical activities. Any paperwork, clerical activity, or travel time that's related to any of the activities that you might be engaged in and associated with a specific code should be credited to that related code. I'll give you an example using the 2B code and the 3 code. Let's say you're standing at the copy machine at your designated moment in time copying SSI paperwork or perhaps an MC Plus application. In that case, you would choose a code 2B because the paperwork is related to facilitating a MoHealthNet eligibility determination. Now, let's say you're working on your lesson plans. Writing a lesson plan is actually paperwork related to your instructional responsibilities with students. So, in that case, you would choose a Code 3. It is important to think about the end result of the clerical activity, travel time, or paperwork. Then, regardless of what the code is, assign that task to the appropriate code. 
Now let's go on to the next code. There is an easy rule of thumb to follow for the next two codes, code three and code four. If you are working with one or more students at the time of your sample moment, it is likely that you're going to be using code three or code four. Let's look at the difference between these two codes. Code three is titled School Related and Educational Services. It should be used for any school related activities that are not health related, such as social services, teaching and instruction, educational duties, employment, and job training. Code three includes performing activities that are specific to instructional, curriculum, and student focused areas. Some examples are providing classroom instruction, including lesson planning related to that instruction, testing students' academic performance, grading or correcting papers. It also includes completing attendance reports and general supervision of students, like hall duty, bus duty, and lunch duty. It includes conferring with students or parents about discipline, academic matters, and other school-related issues. Use Code 3 when participating in or presenting training related to curriculum or instruction, such as language arts workshop or computer instruction. Use Code 3 for any activities that you see as school-related or educational, including any direct interaction with students that is related to non-medical activities and the classroom environment. I would like to take a few moments at this time to talk about individual education plans or IEPs relative to the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act or IDEA. This topic has relationship to Code 3 as well as other codes such as Code 1A, Code 4, and Code 9B depending on the actual activity at hand. Understanding the distinction between codes relative to IEPs is critical to the activity coding process. The Federal Medicaid Oversight Agency, called the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, has a Medicaid school-based administrative claiming guide, which speaks specifically to the IDEA. The guide states that Section 411K13 of the Medicaid's Catastrophic Coverage Act of 1988 amended a portion of the Act to permit Medicaid payment for services provided to children under the IDEA through their IEPs. IDEA provisions require school staff to perform certain activities that are considered educational mandates. These include such things as child find, the initial evaluation, re-evaluation to determine continued need for services, and the development of the IEP. According to the CMS guide, school districts are conducting the activities listed above for the purpose of fulfilling educational mandates under the IDEA. As such, the associated cost of these activities are not allowable as administrative cost under the Medicaid program. Code 3 would be used to represent activities involved in developing, coordinating, and monitoring the process the process of the IEP. Activities would include such things as the actual development of the IEP document, coordinating the annual review of the IEP, making sure the proper paperwork is completed, parent sign-offs are obtained, and attending the initial IEP and subsequent annual review meetings. Before we leave our discussion on coding IEP related activities, let me mention that under Code 9B in the general description, in the school-based administrative claiming guide, it states that, quote, referral, coordination, and monitoring activities related to services in IEP are reported in Code 9B. We will discuss that more at length when we address Code 9B later in this presentation. Now, let's go back to Code 3 and take a look at some actual RMS responses from districts. Let's take a minute to read through the sample activity descriptions. As you can see, there's a variety of educational activities represented here, all appropriately coded as a three. Administering an exam, paperwork related to an IEP, kindergarten orientation activity, general student supervision, teaching a class, and addressing a discipline issue.
A moment ago, I stated that if you are interacting directly with students, it is most likely to be coded a code 3 or a code 4. It will be a code 3 if it's educational in nature, as we have just discussed. You will use a code 4 if it's considered medical or mental health in nature, as covered by Mo HealthNet Division. Code 4 is titled Direct Medical Service. Some of you are therapists, an OT, PT, or speech therapist. Others are perhaps a nurse, psychologist, social worker, or other professional whose job it is to deliver direct medical services to children. When you are delivering direct medical services or mental health services to one or more children, or preparing your plan for delivering those services, you will use a code four. Many school children today have complex medical or mental health needs that are receiving services under an IEP. Use code four when delivering direct services under the IEP. Furthermore, activities that are an integral part of or an extension of a medical service, that is patient follow-up, patient assessment, patient counseling, patient education, patient consultation, will all be reported as a code four. Code four is also used when conducting evaluations or assessments as part of the development of an IEP, or when conducting medical or mental health assessments evaluations and diagnostic testing and preparing related reports. Let's take a look at some actual responses coded as a 4 on RMS forms we've received over the past year. Please take a minute to read through the responses. Basically, Code 4 is for direct medical services or contact you have with children that is considered medical or mental health in nature. In our sample responses, each respondent is working directly with a student providing a medical service, such as the school nurse, or direct therapy to the child in the case of the physical therapist and speech pathologist, or traveling to a location to provide direct services, such as the SLP. This is a good reminder that staff travel necessary to perform medical services is also coded a four, as is, of course, the clerical activity related to the provision of that direct medical service, such as a lesson or therapy plan. For example, if a nurse is entering into the computer a log of the medication that she's just administered to a student, and this activity occurred during her assigned random moment, she would use code four because the clerical activity is related to the direct service that she just performed. This is really pretty simple. Use this code when performing activities associated with assisting an individual to obtain transportation to services not covered by MoHealthNet or when accompanying the individual to such services. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. If you are scheduling or arranging transportation to anything that is not related to medical or mental health services, use Code 5A. It could be social, vocational, or educational programs. You could be arranging transportation for field trips, after-school programs, sports programs, or vocational programs. For all those times you are arranging transportation and it's not related to a child getting medical, dental, or mental health services, you're going to use Code 5A. 5B, of course, is just the opposite of that. It's called transportation-related activities in support of services covered by MoHealthNet. This code addresses scheduling or arranging any kind of specialized transportation for a student to get to services covered by MoHealthNet. This code does not cover the actual transportation to the services, but rather the administrative activities involved in scheduling or arranging for the transportation. It could be arranged for an outside provider. It could be making arrangements or scheduling transportation to another school location or to and from home to the child's regular school of attendance. Other activities that may fall under this code would be talking on the phone with your transportation director about a child who has special needs on the bus, such as scheduling a bus aid or a nurse, or special seat belt or other equipment. If you are arranging specialized transportation for a child that needs medical or mental health services at your specified moment in time, you will choose code 5B. 6A, non-MoHealthNet translation. 
School employees who provide translation services for non-medical activities should use this code. It includes related paperwork, clerical activities, or staff travel required to perform the activities. This code includes arranging for or providing translation services, oral or signing services, that assist the individual to access and understand social, educational, and vocational services. Also use this code for arranging for or providing translation services that assist the individual to access and understand state education or state mandated health screening, hearing, scoliosis, vision, and general health educational outreach campaigns intended for the student population. Although it is related to health, it is included here because it is general outreach, not directed at individuals and MoHealthNet services. Code 6A is also used for activities associated with developing translation materials that assist individuals to access and understand social, educational, and vocational services. 6B, of course, is just the opposite. It is called translation related to MoHealthNet services. School employees who arrange for or provide translation services, oral or signing, that assist the individual to access and understand necessary care or treatment covered by MoHealthNet should use this code. It includes related paperwork, clerical activities, or staff travel required to perform these activities. Also use this code when you are assisting an individual to obtain translation services in order to receive medical, dental, or mental health services covered by MoHealthNet. This would include arranging for translation services or developing translation materials that assist individuals to access and understand necessary care or treatment covered by MoHealthNet. Let's take a look at some of these examples. Providing or arranging for translation services, including sign language or English to Spanish or any other language, in order for a student or family to understand about or to receive MoHealthNet covered services. You may actually be providing translation services or you may be arranging translation services for a conference informing a parent about a child's medical or mental health problem. Included under Code 6B is explaining medical or other technical terminology to a family in order for them to properly understand some of the medical services a child is receiving under MoHealthNet. This would include providing or arranging for a translator to provide an explanation to a parent about their child's school health care plan or medical services in an IEP. Okay, the seven codes. The code sevens could be characterized as the strategizing codes, program planning, policy development, and interagency coordination. Use this code when developing strategies to improve coordination and delivery of educational, vocational, or social services to school-aged children, and when performing collaborative activities with other agencies. Codes 7A and B are frequently used to code meetings. In order to discern whether to use code 7A or code 7B, you must consider the purpose and the content of the meeting. Remember, code 7A relates to non-medical activities. Examples of code 7A include such things as developing strategies to increase the capacity of after-school programs, sports programs, uh, etc or monitoring the delivery of educational or social services in schools. It also includes coordinating with interagency committees to identify and promote and develop non-medical services in the school system. Colin, let's take a few minutes at this time to look at some actual RMS responses recorded as 7A during the past year. Please take a moment and read through these responses. As you can see, the responses represent a variety of activities associated with developing strategies to improve the coordination and delivery of non-medical services to school-aged children. These responses are good illustrations of the broad population focus of 7A activities as they involve policy, program planning, and coordination at a state, community, or district level as opposed to planning for individual children. Also note that the responses are from persons whose job descriptions would include program planning, policy development, and interagency coordination. Code 7B is titled Program Planning. 
policy development and interagency coordination related to MoHealthNet services. This code should be used by school staff when performing activities associated with the development of strategies to improve the coordination and delivery of MoHealthNet covered medical, dental, mental health services to school-age children and when performing collaborative activities with other agencies and or providers. Only employees whose position descriptions include program planning, policy development, and interagency coordination should use this code. Examples of activities to be coded 7B would include such things as developing strategies to assess or increase the capacity of school, medical, dental, and mental health programs, evaluating the need for health services in relation to specific populations or geographic areas, monitoring the medical, dental, mental health service delivery systems in schools, working with other agencies to improve collaboration around the early identification of medical, dental, mental health problems, developing strategies to assess or increase the cost effectiveness of school programs related to the medical, dental, or mental health programs, developing advisory or work groups of health professionals to provide consultation and advice regarding the delivery of health care services to school population, and coordinating with interagency committees to identify, promote, and develop healthy children and youth services in the school system. It is a very important if your job involves program planning, policy development, and interagency coordination, and you are in a meeting during your assigned moment in time, that you consider the reason for the meeting and the topic of the activity in which you were involved in at your assigned moment in time. A specific description of those elements will assist you when choosing the appropriate code for the activity. Let's look at some responses that would appropriately be coded as 7B. Please take a few moments to read through them. Here are four different representations of program planning, policy development, and interagency coordination related to medical services. How to programmatically plan for an increase in students with diabetes in school. Coordinating all SLP services across the district. How to be more efficient and effective in meeting the needs of students. Developing a referral list for people, such as yourselves, to use when working with parents. And working with health agencies within the community to ensure all children get the necessary preventative health care. The extended codes reference has other examples of activities that would be coded 7B. This list can also be used to stimulate thinking within the school district around other activities that could be implemented, resulting in greater access and coordination of medical services within your school district. Let's move on to code 8A non-MO health net training. This code is used by school staff when coordinating, conducting, or participating in training events and seminars for outreach staff regarding the benefits of programs other than MO health net programs. Use this code, for example, when training includes how to assist families or students to access the services of education programs, how to more effectively refer students for those services. This code represents professional development that leads to the improvement in the delivery of educational, social, or vocational programs in the school setting. Key words for this code are outreach, benefit, access, and referral. As a point of clarification, remember that we talked about training under Code 3 as well. Training activities under Code 3 are related to curriculum and instruction. Let's move on now and view some responses appropriately coded as 8A. Please take a moment to read through the list. As you can see, these responses are about training events and seminars for staff that do outreach type activities. That is, staff that are involved in providing information about the benefits of programs and how to assist persons to access those programs or to more effectively refer students to programs or services other than to Medicaid or MoHealthNet programs. Code 8B is titled MoHealthNet Specific Training. This code is used by school staff when coordinating, 
conducting or participating in training events and seminars for outreach staff regarding the benefits of medical MoHealthNet related services, how to assist families to access such services, and how to more effectively refer students for those services. Just a reminder, you are considered outreach staff by your district. That's why you're on the personnel roster for SDEC and why you're engaged in this training today. You may be thinking, I don't think I've ever gone to anything called MoHealthNet specific training, and that's probably true. But let's look at the definition. It says, quote, participating or coordinating training, which enhances early identification, intervention, screening, and referral of students with special health needs to HCY services, or participating or coordinating training, which improves the delivery of medical services. Again, what we're referring to is medical, dental, or mental health services. Let's think about that definition a little bit. Any training that you attend in district or out of district that is enhancing your skills to better identify students, refer those students, and treat students with special health care needs or training that specifically prepares you to more fully understand how to comply with administrative requirements related to medical MoHealthNet services would be coded as an 8B. Any training that enhances your skills to better provide services to an individual child or children should be coded as 8B. Let's look at some actual responses on RMS forms that were appropriately coded as 8B. Please take a moment to read through these responses. As you can see, the sample responses represent a variety of training events that will lead to improved processes in identification, referral, or delivery of medical services covered by MoHealthNet. Operant words in these descriptions include such words or phrases as training in a health program, improving delivery of medical services, MoHealthNet, referral, warning signs related to a health risk, and training on how to make a health-related referral. Let's take another quick look at the extent of medical services covered by MoHealthNet. It is important when talking about training under Code 8B for enhancement in early identification, intervention, screening, and delivery of medical services. The list is also relevant to Code 9B. When we deal with referral, coordination, and monitoring of medical services, but we are jumping the gun just a little bit. Let's begin the discussion of the nine codes with 9A. Code 9A is called Referral, Coordination, and Monitoring of Non-MoHealthNet Services. It's used when making referrals or coordinating and or monitoring the delivery of non-medical services to students, such as educational, vocational, or social services. Use 9A when making a referral related to educational, social, or disciplinary issues. It would include such things as referrals for or accessing child care, employment, or job training. This could be used when participating in a meeting or discussion to coordinate or review a student's need for scholastic, vocational, or non-health related services. It would include gathering any information that may be required in advance of a non-medical referral or monitoring and evaluating the non-medical components of the IEP. The title itself, Referral, Coordination, and Monitoring, is very helpful when determining what should be coded as a 9A because it encompasses exactly what it says. It's the referral, coordination, and monitoring you do on a routine basis that are non-medical in nature. Let's take time to look at a few sample responses appropriately coded as 9A. Please read through the sample responses on the screen. As you can see, we have examples of people doing tasks alone in relation to making non-medical referrals and compiling data in preparation for a meeting with others about a student's academic progress. We also see examples of people meeting with others to confer, monitor, or coordinate educational services for children with IEPs. I mentioned earlier 
that 9b was a code that encompasses some IEP activities when they are related to the medical services contained in an IEP. Let's take a more complete look at 9b at this time. 9b is titled Referral, Coordination, and Monitoring of MoHealthNet Services. Again, we're talking about the comprehensive list of services on your screen. The 9B code is a very important code because it represents the lion's share of those activities that ensure the children in your district come to school healthy and ready to learn. Code 9B is used when making referrals for coordinating and or monitoring the delivery of medical services, that is, MoHealthNet covered services. Referral, coordination, and monitoring activities related to medical services in an IEP are also reported in this code. However, activities that are a part of providing direct medical service, such as OT, PT, speech, nursing services, mental health counseling services, etc., are not included in this code. Remember, they would be appropriately coded as a four. Use code 9B when identifying and referring adolescents who may be in need of family planning services. When referring students for necessary med medical health or mental health or substance abuse services covered by MoHealthNet. Examples of 9B would be scheduling or coordinating referrals for any type of medical, dental, or mental health evaluation or examination. You could be gathering the information in advance of such referrals or evaluations and then having to review that information. It includes participating in a meeting, discussions, or conferences with parents or other staff regarding a student's health services or need for health services. There are many possible positions within a school that include the job description responsibilities for these types of activities. This becomes very important because we have a lot of parent conferences. They may be face-to-face -face or they may be over the phone. Anymore, they may be via internet or email. It includes the follow-up contact to ensure a child has received the prescribed health services. Code 9B also includes monitoring or evaluating the medical and mental health components of the existing IEP or school health care plans. Let me give you an example of a very common comment we find on the description line on an RMS form. The sampled employee will write, I was on the phone. The first thing we're wondering when reviewing the RMS form is, who were you on the phone with? And what was the purpose of that phone call? If you were on the phone with a parent talking about academic concerns or progress, it's, a, it's coded a 9A. But if you're talking with a parent about their child's ADHD and response to medical treatment, then it's going to be coded a 9B. Another example would be a conference or conversation with another staff person. It doesn't have to be an officially scheduled conference. It could simply be a conversation between a child's teacher and a physical therapist, perhaps, talking about a student's progress in physical therapy and discussing whether it's impacting the child's physical stamina in the classroom. In this example, the personnel involved are coordinating and monitoring the medical services the child is getting. This example activity should be coded in 9B. Any follow-up contact to ensure that a child is receiving the prescribed medical services as well as monitoring the medical and mental health components of an IEP would be coded as a 9B. Let's take a look at some actual examples of RMS responses that were appropriately coded as a 9B. Please take a few moments to read over the sample RMS responses. As you can see, this is a code that is used by persons representing a number of different positions. We have an RN, counselor, administrator, educator, and therapist. Referral, coordination, and monitoring of medical services are activities in which many school personnel regularly engage. Let's talk a few minutes about IEP activities. As we discussed in relation to Code 3, IDEA activities that are educationally mandated processes under the IDEA in relation to the IEP must be 
clearly identified and distinguished as non-Medicaid activities. This includes child find activities, initial evaluations and re-evaluations, and the development of the IEP. But please hear this. Once the IEP is established and implemented, Medicaid can pay for administrative activities that are directly related to the provision of those MoHealthNet covered services that are identified in the IEP. Although IEP meetings are generally considered to be for the purpose of fulfilling the IEP requirements for periodic reviews and revisions, and in those cases would be coded a three, at times, either an official IEP meeting or a general meeting are scheduled to better coordinate, monitor, or review medical or mental health components among teachers and medical providers at school or between school staff and community providers. Such meetings might also be called if a referral for additional medical services was warranted. Participation in such meetings would be coded 9B. Finally, we've come to our last code, Code 10, General Administration. Use Code 10 when performing general administration activities of the school or district, including those activities not directly assignable to other program activities. General administration includes such activities as attending or facilitating school meetings or board meetings, reviewing school or district procedures or rules, providing general supervision of staff, including supervision of student teachers or classroom volunteers. It also includes such things as reviewing technical articles or research articles and performing other administrative or clerical activities related to the general building or school district-wide functions or operations. Use Code 10 to document lunch breaks, other breaks, vacation or leave, or other paid time not at work. Let's explore this a little further. You might have paid time off for inclement weather or for, for facility emergencies, such as a fire or the boiler goes out. If you are paid during the time you're not at school, then you'll want to use Code 10. If your time off is unpaid or you are not scheduled to work at your specific moment in time, then do not choose any code. If you are completing a paper form, simply write on the description lines, the activity description lines, not scheduled to work, or write unpaid time off. And as always, return the RMS form promptly to your district SDAC coordinator. If you are completing an electronic form, notify your SDAC coordinator to reject the form. Sometimes Code 10 becomes the automatic default code that personnel use for any staff meeting or paperwork. There is potential for miscoding with that kind of response. Code 10 is reserved for those meetings and paperwork activities that are not directly assignable to any other specific program activity, but apply generally to personnel regardless of the program in which they're involved, such as a faculty meeting to inform staff about general building-wide issues, or the emergency school evacuation plan, or a meeting for the purpose of developing the school annual or multi-year school improvement plan. It is also used for general administration and clerical activities related to building-wide or district-wide functions, such as payroll or maintaining inventories. It also would include such things as a general training for all staff within a building, which might be about something like tornado drills or evacuation plans or school-wide lockdowns. Anything that is there for everybody regardless of your role would be a Code 10. It also includes things such as supervision of staff. So if you're supervising a student teacher during that time or if you're the building administrator who's evaluating a staff member at that time or perhaps supervising a volunteer, all of those type of activities would be coded a 10. One other consideration are those times when you are on personal leave or you have a day off or you're only working part of a day when you get paid for the time off. So it would be sick leave or it would be personal leave or it would be a vacation time. If you are on paid leave, then that is coded a 10.
Please take a moment to think before coding activities. If you're attending a staff meeting, consider the topic or intended outcome at the time of your random moment. If it's related to another code, then record it as such. Otherwise, use Code 10. If doing paperwork, please take an extra moment and think about the end result of that paperwork. Oftentimes, it's not general administration, but it's actually related to one of the other activity codes that we've just discussed. Remember, clerical work, paperwork, and travel time are coded according to their related activity function. This concludes our review of the activity codes. We encourage you to go to our website and download other training materials that you can use as a reference should you be randomly selected to document a moment in time. Included on our website is also a short abbreviated video on just the activity codes which we recommend you use as a refresher upon receiving an RMS form from either your SDAC coordinator or via the electronic system. You may view it at your convenience. If you have questions at any time while completing your random moment sample, we will list a toll-free helpline number at the end of this presentation, or you may contact your local SDAC coordinator for assistance. The final slide is our toll-free number and website address. And again, thank you so much for your participation.